chapter 2. The women of Antioch visit Imadi early in the morning, the next day, to sympathize with Ntube's spilling of food the previous night at Ewang Ename's hut. She puts away her chairs to prevent the women from sitting and considers them gossips who do not mind their businesses. She does not understand why the fall of a child should be such an important issue, and she eaves drops on two women tagging her to be cursed. And if not of her resilience, she should have already left the village. The women believe that this is the handiwork of witchcraft, but they are assured that nothing will befall her as she is the daughter of the gods of Mount Kupe and Manenguba. The women led by an elderly woman recounts a series of her misfortunes that have befallen a mother and they feel pity for her. A mother's response is immediate and sharp. She appreciates their sympathy, but she does not understand how the spilling of food is their business. She accuses them of gossiping and pretense of sympathy. She also tells the women that whomever attributes the fall or the spilling of the food to witchcraft are witches themselves. She asks the women to go back to their various homes and take care of important chores at home than to busy themselves with what does not concern them. She also tells them that she would not do the same if something happened of the sort happened to one of the children of the women in the village. Eduke, who has a mother at heart for the incident concerning the alum the previous night, takes offense and insinuates that a mother's behavior is an affront to the women folk. She proposes that the women hold an emergency meeting to discuss the issue. Munge is skeptical about the women's action and its success because the mother had successfully made the chief and the counselors to capitulate when they had wanted to kick her away from her husband's compound. Their reasons being that the compound is at the entrance of the village and women are not supposed to occupy such positions. Secondly, they had wanted to move her to the center of the village, especially as she was a nursing mother. Thirdly, Mwankum is incarnated behind the compound whenever the amok has to be repaired. And so on and so forth. But the men had failed. And she had stood her ground to the point that the chief had decided to transfer Mwankum's shrine behind his compound. Eduke insists that a mother be punished, but Esunge believes that they will fail like the men had, and one of them will betray the women, thus giving a mother time to strategize. Hunze points out that the men had failed because they had wanted to have a love affair with her. The women decide to ostracize a mother from all activities of the women folk until she apologizes to the women. Mboke defends a mother, stating that she was right in accusing the women of blowing out of proportion the fall of a child. She also informs that them that a mother has been of exemplary character, that despite her widowhood and her young age, she has never snatched someone's husband. She insists that if they have anything against her, they should say it in front of her and confront her openly, rather than speaking behind her back in gossip. She warns that she will inform a mother of everything that they have decided against her. Mboke 
discloses to him murder the decision of the women and their conspiracy. A mother thanks her and concludes that Eduke is the person championing the conspiracy. She refers to Eduke as an empty woman who disrespects her husband. She asks Mboke to be firm in her support of her cause, although she too risks being ostracized. After reading this chapter, these are the silent points to note. Take note that gossiping amongst women is a societal ill, especially from those who feel inferior to the gossiped individual. The other women know that a mother is not just any type of women, and so they cannot confront her openly. They speak behind her back. There is also superstition that is evoked by the association of the various misfortunes that have befallen a mother to witchcraft. She also has a difficult sleep because she cannot wrap her finger around the happenings of the day because she believes that there is something more than meets the eye. Take note of the manner in which the village is governed through the chief and the councillors. And again, a mother's character is fully developed as a woman who is firm, a woman who is fearless, a woman who is determined. In addition, she is very outspoken, even to the detriment of causing her pain. Women are their own enemy. And they take a little outspoken nature of a woman or the truth of what a woman has spoken, they blow it out of proportion to the point that they have to ostracize her from all female activity. See the contrast between a mother and the other women. The women, other women refer to her as a tiger. That's to tell you that she lifts her head above water, above all the other women. And that explains the reason why Eduke begrudges her. The confrontation between a mother and the women leading to her ostracism highlights conflict. And lastly, take note of the beautiful use of proverbs that have been employed to put across the message. The ostracism and the conflict between a mother and the women of Atiyek is very important in the development of the plot because it will provoke Ahone to leave a Kenzu to come and solve the problem in Atiyek to reconcile her sister with the women, but which a mother will refuse. And she has no other option but to take her to a Kenzu where she will want her to spend some little time and cool off before she returns home. 